Good afternoon. KETV.com. Good afternoon. I'm Julie Cornell. We are interrupting for a news conference by Omaha Mayor Gene Stothert. The mayor is announcing a $500 million redevelopment in the area of Crossroads Mall. Let's listen in. And, uh, we could explain uh, why we are here today. So I just wanted to make sure you knew that this is why we set the room up the way, the way we did. And we will not be wearing our mask when we are doing our presentation. But again, good afternoon. And it has certainly been a very long road to get here today. And it has been worth every stop and turn and detour. We are more than ready to announce today that we have signed an agreement with Century Development and Lockwood Development to redevelop the crossroads. With me today are Frank Krejci, who is the president of Century Development, Chip James, president of Lockwood Development, Jude Beller, who is Lockwood's senior vice president of development, and Emily O'Connor, Lockwood Development and vice president. So first, I want to say something to Frank and to Chip. Thank you so much for your partnership. Um, nearly everything that we accomplish in Omaha benefits from the support and the vision and the leadership of our valued partners. And your plans will build on the momentum and the growth that we are experiencing in Omaha right now, even during a pandemic. So this is pretty amazing. And I have great confidence with this project, our partnership, and in Omaha's economy. CHIP will deliver a spectacular development at this true crossroads of our city. And in a minute, he will show you what you will expect at the new crossroads. Or I think Jude might be doing that today. But for our part, the City of Omaha anticipates using $12.5 million of redevelopment bonds to pay for infrastructure costs in and around the crossroads development. Now remember, redevelopment bonds are very specific with their use, and they cannot be used to supplement the general fund, which is where we have our shortfall right now. Lockwood uh, plans to apply for tax increment financing and also enhanced employment area financing or the EEA occupation tax. We have also had some discussions about the city having the option to buy the garage, which is currently on the northeast corner right behind Target. Some of you who remember the original crossroads will remember the slogan that all roads lead to the crossroads. And that was true 60 years ago, and that is certainly still true today. 72nd and Dodge will always be the symbolic center of Omaha. So Frank, you have worked for years to plan the right project at the right time for Crossroads, and this is both. This is the right project, and it is at, and it is at the right time. And I am confident that your long record of development in Omaha will make the new Crossroads a huge success. So with that, Frank, I'm going to turn it over to you okay. to say a few words. I have been doing this for a very long time. I want a legacy development for this corner of the city of Omaha, and I'm glad Chip is partnering with me to bring about this vision. So let's get going. There we go. <laughs> Sweet and short and to the point. Thanks, Chip. Frank. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being here today. First, I would like to thank Frank for selecting me for this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to develop the iconic corner of 72nd Dodge. Frank and I have been going to lunch almost every Saturday since we began working on this project a couple years ago, and I really think we've grown to be good friends and business partners. And by the way, I thought I had a pretty good work ethic until I met you. Um, I would also like to personally thank Mayor Stothert and her team for her unwavering dedication and cooperation to the crossroads of the last couple of years. Frank and I share a vision of that 72nd Dodge is still the heart of Omaha, as it was 60 years ago when Crossroads opened for business. We see the crossroads as a place that our entire community will be proud of and enjoy for many decades to come. In addition, there have been many people from both Century and Lockwood Development who have spent the last couple of years getting us to this point today. Jude Beller and Emily O'Connor from my development team are here to walk you through the site plan. Thanks, Chip. Maybe to get our bearings, we'll go ahead and uh, focus our attention on the slideshow. Um, first, for starters, a little bit of the boundary of what the Crossroads Redevelopment Project looks like. Uh, many people know, but just to make sure we're familiar. Um, to the south, we board on Dodge Street. To the east, we have 72nd Street. Um, to the north, we have Cass Street. And it goes on a west boundary right about where 75th Street would be. Um, for most Omahans, know it as the corner where Charleston's located. 
Um, so that is our boundary for the redevelopment project. It's about 40 acres. Um, it's inclusive of the existing target as well as the existing parking garage. All other improvements inside the 40 acres will be demolished as part of this project. Um, that is beginning this fall. On the site plan, uh, to get our bearings on what the land uses may look like on the 2D at dimensions, um, quadrant A is where target exists. Quadrant B is our existing 2200 stall parking garage, which we'll renovate um, for new improvements. Quadrant C wants to be an office tower of about 400,000 feet with underground parking. Quadrant D is our signature pavilion for public assembly and some civic uses we'll talk about. Um, quadrant E is a lifestyle building. Um, we'll have uses in there that include fitness, health, entertainment. Think of that as a family fun center. Quadrant F is going to be a land use quad. Um, so what we'll have there is about 300,000 feet, which will be inclusive of senior family, some multifamily units, as well as some capacity for office. And that will also be with having parking under the building. Quadrant G also has parking under the building. What you see there is in red is 75,000 feet of first floor retail with about five stories of multifamily apartments above it, which is about 300,000 feet of multifamily, 75,000 feet of retail. Moving to H, that's one story retail. It's about 75,000 feet. That's a pedestrian pavilion in the middle. Quadrant I, that, that asset there is about 75,000 feet again, a first floor retail. Above that will be a hotel that rises about seven to eight stories. Um, there'll also be office uses on that site. That also has underground parking. Quadrant J is our dining district, um, where we will be encouraging outdoor dining in that public pavilion right there. K is our signature entrance. We'll have some retail capacity there for some special retail locations. And we're also blessed with the way this has been designed over the years for the city to have a crossroads stop for the orbit um, for our public transportation that comes to and from the crossroads. conceptual renderings for everybody. Um, this is a good visual as it relates to the massing and the scale of the new buildings and the height that will come um, as we renovate this district. And you can see how we've specifically designed um, towards Cass Street to have the real density where we'll get these buildings up in the air. So if the tent that exists today at Crossroads is 50 feet up, we're probably 30 or 40 feet above that. So we'll have a real new scale to our skyline at the central part of Omaha. Um, and also specifically, we scaled down for the central retail to encourage the pedestrian stroll. Safe family, um, fun, fun area to go shopping and stroll. The visual here is our central pavilion, um, which will include some art as well as some cultural aspects, um, something that causes a purposeful connection of visitors from the hotel, um, office tenants in the office tower, some folks from the Family Fun Center, as well as the visitors to all of the shopping. Um, there is a purposeful design here to be a symbolic crossroads um, for which the corner is known. Here's a little bit of scale looking to the east from the central retail. So we're at the one-story retail looking at the hotel building in the rear, as well as the office tower. The hotel will have a rooftop bar on the right side. This is looking towards the west, again, from the central retail, looking at our multifamily assets that border the west part of the project. You also see a, another public plaza that will encourage outdoor dining and entertaining. It's a good visual or scale. Um, we're excited to get going. We've got a lot of work to do. At this point, we'll open it up to any questions. Are you, got, are you okay with the mics over here? You can hear clear enough. Okay. <coughs> questions? Mayor, could you explain the, the financial difference to the city, this project, 
versus the ones in the past that you said weren't beneficial to the taxpayer? <laughs> Joe, Jordan, what projects are you talking about? Well, this project. Oh, this you project. Said, you said that it wasn't, wasn't right enough for, for the city taxpayer. I, I, don't, I don't recall saying that, Joe. But, but uh, with this development, with any development, we always work with the developers and we do as much as we can do. You know, we have a limited amount of, of bonding capacity, whether it's redevelopment bonds, lease purchase bonds, revenue bonds, but we will always try to work with any developer to do what we can to get a good project going. This project, I know, uh, I've been mayor seven years, we've been working on it that long as me mayor, but we've been working on it a lot longer than that. And we've had different uh, designs and different renditions of it, but this is the one that I think we all feel is going to be the winner. So there were different financial arrangements in the past on some of the funds that you said you didn't think were a good fit? I don't, Joe, I don't recall saying that, and I could certainly sit down with you and look at what we've talked about in the past with different financial arrangements. I, I will tell you this, the 12 and a half million of redevelopment bonds is something that we could do. It's something that we could afford. We have the capacity to do it. This is a $500 million project in the center of the city, right along where the BRT is going to be. And it is in dire need of redevelopment. And this is going to be a great development there. And if the city can make it happen by putting in 12 and a half million of redevelopment bonds, that is a good investment for the city of Omaha. Mayor, four years ago, you announced that the development was going to be developed. The auditorium site, also a lot be across from CHI. It's supposed to be a big development. Uh, this is maybe the third or fourth press conference I've been to over the last 15 years regarding crossroads. What makes you think this one is the one that's going to work? These folks right here. We've been working with them for a long, long time. They've got a great partnership, and they're going to make it happen. Now, recall that with the Civic Auditorium site, we're still working on that. We had Tetred that we had an agreement was going to develop it. Um, we, it during the, the negotiations with them, they are the ones that decided that they wanted to walk away from that project. But that doesn't mean we're walking away from the project, and we are still working on the Civic Auditorium site. Lot B... It was in the, uh, the study we did and the work we did was intended to be a, a blueprint for what could happen in the future. We did not have an intention on lot B to go forward and develop it right now. We just wanted to have a plan when it was time. So we had no plans to go forward with lot B, but that's just like we do a lot. Tom, I mean, we have a master plan and we look at how we want Omaha to develop and how we want it to um, you know, to, to coordinate and complement other developments, just like what we're doing downtown right now with the mercantile and with what we're doing with the riverfront. So all of these things, we work very, very carefully together. They're not just something that, you know, that somebody has a thought and we throw it together. We put a lot of time and a lot of work on these things. But look at all the other developments that are happening, too. They're, again, the riverfront, the mercantile, uh, the Blackstone. Um, what Applied Underwriters is doing out at, at uh, 144th in, in Dodge at the Boys Town property. I mean, these are huge developments that are underway. And yes, you can. <laughs> Go well, ahead. Two things that make it different is Frank and I have now closed on the land to the west of the crossroads um, in the last two weeks, and we have planned demolition for October, so we're going forward. What's the completion date? Hopefully, summer, fall of 24. Do you have any anchor tenants uh, already lined up? No, none that I can announce today. Mayor, you said at the beginning that, as it was since the 60s, all roads lead to crossroads. Lately, so have all the protests, complete with tear gas, rock throwing. What would you say to those potential tenants who might be reluctant to go into this area? I really think that the protesting um, and the demonstration showed that the heart of our city is still 72nd Dodge. We go there to celebrate national championships. We go there to demonstrate. We go there to mourn. And what that tells me is the heart of the city is still sitting there. You concerned people might be concerned about the safety factor? I don't think so. We've had long talks with Target. Um, most of the damage was negligible. I thought most of the protesters were peaceful. And um, if if it shows that 72nd and Dodge is where people congregate for, again, happiness, celebrations, mourning, I think it just says that that's the corner. 
And, and Joe Jordan, we, I mean, because there was a protest there that, that uh, part of it turned a little ugly, doesn't mean we, we ignore that, that center of our city at 72nd and Dodge. You know, in one week's period, we had over 30 protests all over Omaha. It doesn't mean we're not going to go in those places anymore. So we had protests downtown. We still want to build up downtown. It's still an important part of the city, and so is 72nd and Dodge. And it is certainly smack dab in the middle of the city. So I couldn't be more excited about this development. It's a long time coming. It's a great development. It's a great partnership we have, and we know it's going to go forward. And wait till you see the, the, the demo starting this fall, and then I think people will say, yep, this is a reality. It's going to happen. Well, you know, the pandemic has changed every one of our lives in one way or another. We know that. We didn't plan for it. There was no way we could budget for it. you got to play the hand you're dealt, and that's what we are doing now. But I will tell you this, during the entire pandemic, although it greatly hurt our general fund because of the revenues that we usually get into our general fund with, with occupation taxes, restaurant taxes, hotel, motel taxes, the revenue we get from all the events that were canceled, the, the planning department and the activity as far as development and permits and inspections and plan reviews is just like it was, if not better than last year. It's still booming in our planning department. So developers have continued on. Now they might have stopped a little bit during the pandemic, like I know applied underwriters stopped for a little bit of time because they wanted to protect their workers, but they're back at it now. And so again, what we are seeing is recovery and we hope that that will continue when we will continue to recovery. But as far as development, we haven't seen any stall in development or investment in development either. Have you guys been in talks with you and know, I mean, obviously lots of students will be excited about this, and um, especially areas where they can live, it's not going to be some apartments. Well, you know what? You are hearing about it for the first time right now. So we haven't been talking to UNO too much about what was going to go there because you're just finding out for the first time today. But I'm sure that there will be conversations. Can you guys talk about the feel you're going for? What do you want this place to feel like? We want it to feel there wants to be something here for everyone in Omaha. So we want live, work, and play. And I know that's an overused term, but. Um, that's why we wanted a hotel. That's why we want an entertainment district. We want a family environment. We will want shopping. The shopping is probably reduced from the plans you saw in the past for a reason, but there is still shopping here. Um, the variety is very important to us. Having office here so that we have daytime population so our restaurants thrive. Um, I think the site plans speak for themselves. As you're talking about your retail now, when you have your locations, will that be just one retail place or will you have no, we'll have multiple retailers in different buildings.